the topic of the discussion for this afternoon is what's next for the progressive movement. And, um, you know, uh, I think we all know that we're in for a tough couple of years. Um, and in some ways, I think what is most troubling to many of us about the current period we're in is that not only is it going to be very hard to make progress on some of the big problems that our country faces, the economy, unemployment, immigration, climate change, it's a very long list, but also that our capacity to solve big problems has been so deeply eroded by the power of corporate special interests, by money in politics, by a media that seems increasingly dysfunctional, the filibuster rules, um, it's a really very daunting set of obstacles and we don't have a lot of time to waste to address those enormous social problems. But I actually want to start the discussion with a note of optimism, which is that we have been here before. Um, that may not sound like optimism, but hang on. <laughs> uh, the great lesson of American history is that we only get out of predicaments like the ones that we face today through mass organization and through social movements. That's kind of the core of what I want to get across today. And formations that are organized outside of political parties. So the women's movement gave us suffrage, the civil rights movement gave us the civil rights era, populist and progressive movements gave us the progressive era, unions gave us the reforms of the New Deal. And those movements faced obstacles that in many respects were considerably greater than the obstacles that we face today in terms of violence, worse imbalances of money and power, worse imbalances of rigged rules, and those challenges make our own look modest by comparison. So if that analysis of the current situation is correct, then the key strategic question for us as progressives is not, should Obama attack to the left or should Obama attack to the center in response to the election results? The key question becomes, how do we generate the kind of movement building and movement building energy that's required to change the direction of our country that's appropriate for this time. And I think, just to close this out, that we've learned something from recent movements, from the Obama campaign itself, which was a social movement uh, in a sense, from the Tea Party, from the immigrant rights movement, that we can apply to the challenge of building social movements in the, in the period ahead of us. And I think there are a few principles worth noting that the movements that seem to be succeeding are united by strong, compelling national vision, ideas, and interests that bind people together, that they rely heavily on the recruitment of large numbers of volunteers who are um, drive action in a coordinated way, but also in a decentralized way with considerable autonomy, and emphasize here that it means not just mobilizing existing bases, but recruiting new people to our movement who are not currently organized, the importance of social media and new media, and the importance of popular and political education to making progress. So I'll stop there for my opening gambit, but it's the basic proposition is that our challenge in this next era is a challenge of movement building. <laughs>